neighborhood closer and, and uh, get the things done that we need to do, to do. Lord, we just ask you to be with us and guide and direct us. Lord, we just ask you to be with all the uh, members and just watch over and make sure they have the things they need in life. Lord, Lord we give you the honor and the glory and we praise your name. Amen. 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 Please place the face flag and salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all for coming out to our May meeting, getting ready for the summer. Yep. I hope the winter's going to be good to us this year. I hope so, too. So, I guess y'all do know that the river's going to come back up now another couple feet. Oh, no. It went down, so be prepared. Oh, oh. Yeah. Coming up to 18. Uh, I think it's supposed to come up about 18 foot. Uh, yeah. What was it at, 22? What? 24? It's not going to take too much on these sustained rains, though, to yeah. All right, well, thank you all for coming out tonight. We'll move on to the agenda. So, um, Madam Secretary, roll call, please. Lynn Turner? Here. Tom Trammell? Here. Vonda Ackerson? Here. James Baker? Here. Judy Grimm? Here. Mike Davis? <clears throat> nope. Mike's out of town. Here. Okay. Uh, Sammy Keene? Here. Tommy Matthews? I think Mike is, uh, I mean, Tommy's with his wife. She broke her hip. Oh, my goodness. Here. Wayne Sellers. Here. Charlie Thompson. Here. Terry Hester. Here. Mickey Olson. Here. Vicki Sellers. Here. Uh, Bill Brim. Here. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> so we have a, a motion from the board to approve those members that are absent but uh, did call in. So we move, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Brown. Second. Second by Charles. All in favor of the motion, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? We move on to the agenda. Copy the agenda. You have a motion to approve the agenda. Motion by Wayne. Second. Second by Vonda. Any discussion on the agenda? All in favor of the motion, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. So we have uh, minutes, Madam Secretary, to approve, and I believe we have March and April minutes. Is that correct? That is correct. Uh, at the last meeting, when I realized I had sent the March meetings uh, correctly, I resent them, and we were to approve them today. Any corrections? Okay. And we'll go ahead and, and uh, mention the April. We'll just do those up at the same time. Okay. There's just no objections. Uh, you received the April. By the way, Sammy, did you receive them? I sent them to you again. Yes, okay. You okay. okay. Any corrections for April? All right. Okay. So, uh, with that said, uh, need a motion to approve April and I mean March and April's uh, minutes. Sammy, make the motion. Okay. We have a second. Uh, second by Charlie. Any discussion on the minutes? All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Move on to the secretary's report. So, do you have anything to Nothing to report. Okay. Move on to the treasurer's report, Vicki. Banking information did it on As of April the 30th, our Seacoast checking account is 138 235 71. A reserve savings account. $503.56. Our CD account is already up to $50,413.39. And our CD membership checking account is $16,638.70 for a total of $205,791.36. Um, our monthly checks were $4,914.12. Auto draft 795.71. So our expenditures were 5,709.83. Our total deposits were 14,093.04. Any questions on the banking information? Board members, you have any questions? Motion to approve. Motion by Charlie to approve. You have a second. 
Seconded by Judy. We discussion on the finance report. That's to include all checks for the month of 49, 14, 12, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Vicki. Anything else, Vicki? No. Usually you do. I know. Well, I've been out of town. All right. So we'll move on to the president's report. Jerry? Okay. I see, I've passed around at the main um, application for the gate readers to put on the website. And I want y'all to look at it if y'all approve it. For volunteers to work the gate at Hoder Park. One, we're going to put one volunteer there. Yes, we can get anybody to volunteer. You get it, Lynn? We took it out of the budget. Mm -hmm. Took it out of the budget, one of the gate readers. So we're hoping people are going to stand up and do it. Well, if I'm not mistaken, at your meeting, <clears throat> there were a lot of folks that said they wanted to volunteer. Yeah. So, uh, and questioned it in the budget. So I think you did take out. Readers and one space volunteers. Uh, we took out one one reader position. Wow. So we need one person that's going to volunteer the uh, what what are your hours? Are, what are your hours on Saturday? Nine to six on Saturday and ten to five on Sunday. And I need them to work all day like my regular day group. Okay. And also Memorial Day, what's that? <laughs> Sunday five? Yeah. five on the holiday weekend. Yeah. And what, what about the other parts? I got my regular girls that don't work for me. Okay. All right. So that'll be up enough. You um, run into any issues, you don't get volunteers. Uh, we're prepared to move some money or do something. We don't have to do something. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it takes two people to hold parts. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, another thing is, I know Bill's been down there one time. I've been down there twice in the last couple of weeks. We need to do something about getting more power out here at the pavilion because everybody's bringing crop pops and all kind of stuff in now, right. and it keeps slipping the break. So, so you have to be a 20 amp service. Yeah. All the pavilions. Yeah. Just one one service line. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did you look in the panel box? I know that was a, a the square D amp box yeah. that was put in when the um, bathrooms were done. So we have capacity. There's room there. Yeah. Even if we have, I'm sure there's room. I, I didn't count them, but you can even split a breaker. We okay. with the, so, uh, um, oh, all right. you mentioned something to me about that, and I got electrician that'll work with us. Uh, well, you know, we need to get a couple, because uh, I need I need a few things done since we're going to do it, get the guy to do all of it. At Brandon Park, we need to fix that, uh, that weather head. So, we're going to need a permit for that. Okay, so did that get hit by a tree? That got hit. By uh, the hurricane last year, <clears throat> and uh, we tried to get a permit. Our, me and Terry went over to over to County, 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 and they wouldn't let us get a permit because it's not it's not a hard job. It's, it's only inch and a quarter pipe, and it's, it's not even right. high amperage. But so uh, we just need to get an electrician. We gotta have an electrician. We already got one quote from uh, Burns Electric in Ranford. Right. They're the ones that put the service in for us. Okay. All right. Then why don't we get together and discuss that and uh, also talk to uh, Troy up in Columbia County. And I just, uh, the thing is, you know, I, I get members asking me to pull from here. To, yeah. From the, and uh, I've asked a few that were electricians, but they're not able to pull permits. So. Yeah. Well, from a liability standpoint, yeah. we're, uh, we're going to be need to get a, a, a certified link. Oh, absolutely. We need to run out to that yeah. building out there. Yeah. Because there's, there's a wire, but I don't think it's even hot. You know, um, <coughs> it's a yellow um, wire, too. So. Back in the day, I think Mike Davis and Charlie did that. Ran the law stuff. Yeah. I believe there's some conduit in the ground. I don't know. Uh, We'll have to do a little exploration on that. And then then we'll run one out, another circuit out there, because they put in an extra fan, too, this year. And that fan's messing up, so uh, Tommy Matthews is going to have them come out, the guys that install the fan, and check it, because it's probably a bad fan, because it's the second time it's gone. Yeah. So let me ask you this. Um, is one service going to be enough? 
Well, you're going to have two 20 amp services. That should be that run at least five. Each one of them run at least five receptacles. The thing is, is you know they can't. You know, 20 amps is 20 amps. You don't go. On, if people turn on a compressor. You know, when the compressor starts up, it's going to pull 10 amp, nine amps or whatever. And if somebody else has those heater pots on. They, they pull a lot of amp. I think two will be enough, but if we're going to pay the guy, at least we ought to do is maybe deadhead one out there so that for the future we're not having yeah. to. While you're doing it, yeah. Yeah, uh, that's my thought. Right. And so you can go from there. But as much use as, as it gets, it'd be worse. It's going to be yeah. busier this year, too. With this year, yeah, there's two, a lot of people. This two couple, I mean, two families used the main pavilion this, this oh. weekend. Well, at one time, so that's you know, and do we need to go anywhere else in the park with power? I don't, I don't that think that so it's because it floods all down there, yeah, just yeah. to the gate and to the uh, the pavilion, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, the, uh, board members, y'all comfortable with Bill and I working on that? Sure, okay, so yeah. we'll work to uh, with the permits and we got some folks that have uh. Electrical license that can pull it and actually will work with it to help us keep the cost down. So, does everybody give that application? Pardon? Does everybody give that application for about a year? Yes. The only thing that I don't see are the times that she mentioned. Are they on here? Probably not on the application itself. Because not the that's times. No, I mean, that's a lot of commitment. They <laughs> That's every I I explained that when people were saying that. I mean, we're asking all day. They don't have to do all two days or three days, but I mean, we need someone that can show up for one day, full day. Right. Right. Because yeah. you're training them at the beginning. Are you going to have some folks on standby? Yeah. Right, just yeah, I got people. somebody on standby. Yeah. All right. So, um, board members, are you good with that application? We will take a vote on that. If you anybody oppose that application, utilizing that. No, it's okay. We'll just say the consensus is we'll use that application then. Okay. Okay, Terry, anything else? Uh, what are, are we doing anything about complaints right now, or are we just holding on to them? Or? Complaints, you don't have to do complaints. Yeah, <laughs> about seven. Uh, about seven of them. You have complaints? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I would really wish you could give them uh, to the chair before the meeting. Okay. So, Oh, I want unless it's something that we need to act something we need to act on right now that might be no I just know y'all told me the people had to email me so I had them do that don't okay. all right then I'll get with you um we will review those and if it's something that we need to speak more about we will. hopefully it's something that's in our uh our recipe thank you all right we're going to talk about what you might do you have anything else Terry that'd be yeah Okay, so we will move now to uh, park manager reporters. I didn't have Tommy here to go through this. He came late, so I'm, I'm going to wing it. All right. Uh, all the uh, yeah, I need some redaction. All the parks are open now, so uh, cleanup is still required. So last meeting, I requested that uh, members, if they're out and about. Uh, and you know, they see some small branches and stuff, throw them up into the brush. I'm going to, I was going to go down today with a chainsaw and clean up that one tree anyway up at Point Park, but the weather wasn't right. But people can still get by there with no real trouble. And now water's coming back up again. Uh, I'm going to go, I'll go down there with my chainsaw and cut it up. And there's two trees. One of them in particular that's leaned over at Point Park, and uh, it's not causing any real trouble getting in the park. It's just there. It, it looks kind of like it shouldn't be there. So I'm going to take care of that, but uh, the water's been up so high and everything else. There's several things that need to be taken care of. Uh, gates are starting to be left open again, and they're leaving, and then I sit, and I'll be in the park or something. Somebody will leave it open. They're leaving it open for other people following them behind them. And they're not members. And, you know, uh, they don't have a key, and if I lock it behind me, they're stuck in here in there without a key. Now, you know, I'm going to be talking, just I'm become blue in the face because it's just crazy. Uh, why can't something, you go in there, unlock it? Why can't you 
lock it back when you get in and out, in and out. What we can do is continue. Yes, sir. Keep, keep, keep that that people that I mean, think about being in New York. People jump in the little toilet like there's some Yeah, that's terrible, isn't it? We, we don't have any kind of problems. Yeah, we don't. <laughs> uh, no vehicles are allowed in Brandon or Fishing Park. No, uh, especially now, it's so muddy in both of them. Uh, camping parks open back up. Uh, we got some repairs we need to do in Camping Park. We've discussed that. And Brandon Park. And Brandon Park. Yeah, we've taken care of that. Uh, start, uh, dogs are still being taken into the parks, and it appears to be the same people doing it for the most part. Uh, the, the dogs, uh, is first and only thing you can ask them, is this dog a service animal required for a disability? And uh, what work or task has the dog been trained to perform? That's it. But there is state law that these people, if they're lying and faking, um, faking that it's a service animal and or emotional support animal, they're under section 314 and 38, I mean, uh, 413 and 817. False and false, fraud, false, fraudulent, fraudulent uh, information being used that way, uh, they can be uh, fined through the court system if they're lying about their dogs coming in and they're not actually what they say they are. Emotional support animals uh, are not allowed it really supposed to be in the park, but we don't. And uh, the other one is there's nothing we can really do with ADA. You know, you know we're, we're, working, we're working with, I think I had that conversation, we're working with uh, a legal groups that just have the, they're having a discussion with the sheriff's office. Right. With the state right now. So they are working on that. They are in conversation, so in your, we'll get a clear definition. In your packet, I printed out okay. for some of you uh, some of the different things and, and ways of uh, finding out or seeing if the dogs are fake or not, you know, because the dogs are supposed to be trained. They're supposed to be able to do certain things. They're not supposed to be not off their leash. They're supposed to be a, the owner. is supposed to be in control of the animal. And if it's barking at somebody, it's... It's not a service animal more than likely, unless that unless that person's causing that other person problem. But you can read about it a little bit if you want to when you're when you get the time. Let me let me uh, throw out something right now. I, I remember having a conversation um, uh, a few weeks ago about some pit bulls and dogs that are running right in this area. Yes, sir. Yeah. And uh, as you know, the the county is has actually hired their own code enforcement team. They erected their own office, and they have code enforcement personnel who are responsible for the code enforcement of those animals. Okay. So um, they that's not in the uh, uh, lunchbox for the Humane Society. Right. So uh, there's there's going to have to be more pressure because. These dogs are running up, and matter of fact, I had one come in my yard, mm -hmm. and I had to chase it out of the yard and hold my dog down. So they are running loose in the neighborhood here. It's going to take a consistent effort to try to get these these animals under some kind of control. We don't know right now, unless some phone calls have been made. I've, I've under, I understand that a few calls have been made, and the, the code enforcement has, has come up with a plan where you have to file a complaint yeah. and then there's another complaint or whatever, that's probably not going to be good enough in the long run. No. And, uh, and I don't know. Yeah, James. You know, they could just check the swan. The swan is pretty simple. My stepdaughter dog with somebody else's pasture. They call, they come out and they tell them to keep that and I'm going to cite you. I mean, it's, and this is Swanee County. We're not trying to get complicated, but Lackey County or somewhere. Oh, this is not even a pasture. This is a, a road to the exactly with the, uh, right. and a park. Exactly. So it's so, even worse than that. They're running along the road and they get run. Right. But you've seen them. Uh, I'm they were out today. Quite sure. And I think we ran one out of the park. Oh, I've ran him out a few times. He was right over here. May, is this I, a, may I show two photos? This is what those dogs did to my cat. They she see this cypress right here. 
Yeah. James finally came over with his long ladder, and I had to climb that ladder to get my cat out of the uh, tree. That, uh, that's a 18 foot ladder or 20 foot ladder. It's a tall. Ladder. It's tall. You went up there. I did. Oh, okay. the, so that happened March 19th, and this happened the next day. This is the front yard at lunch. I'm gardening, and the dog still rushed for my cat. Yeah. And she climbed the front tree. So this did you file a report? I sure did. Yeah. And they got fined, but he doesn't have to pay it. He can he, he can debate whether he wants to pay it or not. <laughs> what if he doesn't pay it? I don't know. But I, I then filed another report, and David just filed three reports because they keep coming. They want her. Mm -hmm. And uh, Let me offer a suggestion. <laughs> Why don't we invite... County Code Enforcement to come to our next meeting. That'd be wonderful. That'd be good. And let them tell us what their rules are and, and how they plan to uh, act on those rules. So I mean, that's 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 well, that'd be great. I was going to ask you when you were talking about the team, is this a new team that they put together? The county decided that they didn't want to uh, have the Humane Society uh, continue to do that task. So uh, they had had a lot of complaints and board members on themselves decided that they would remove it from that agency, which is a volunteer agency, and take it on by themselves because they could save money. So they hired three or four people, gave them insurance, whatever, whatever, bought brand new trucks, put a building because they they could save money. And so uh, they're, they're in charge. Now, I will tell you this much, they're picking up an awful lot of animals. Um, but I don't understand why down here in Fort White that when you get the runaround, it sounds like to me that that's what most people are saying. So, and I don't, so I, we don't know what they're, what's the difference. Yeah. So maybe we can get them uh, to do that. We might actually even uh, put the notice out to let people know that they're going to come talk about that because it is a serious problem in a small little rural community. Like I'd that. like to have the number because the last Bible help? study we had, those three dogs across the street kept rushing over here when ladies would pull up. Right. And they were scared to get out of their cars. Right. So right. if our Bible study starting up again tomorrow, I would like to have the number so I can call if they start coming over here and is there, scaring is them. Is there a way we can post the number on the website to the animal control code enforcement? Code yeah. enforcement? Code no, I don't see why not. Uh, how would you how would you want to label or catalog categorize that? What would be the best way for someone to find that. Well, what if we just come up with a small directory for the county? Yeah. An emergency number for the sheriff's office. Uh -huh. yeah. Great WC. idea. Foot yeah. County. You know, yeah. But they have one for injured wild animals also for WC. Great we idea. Need to run into it. And then we can do the code enforcement to coverage stray animals, lost animals, injured. That's, is there is there a collection of those numbers somewhere? Does anybody yeah, know? I'm sure that I think I've record. seen that in some maybe some old phone book or something. Oh, oh, Thank phone. you. Back when they used to have phone books. Okay. Oh, yeah. is this? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, so Leaky, it's three eight six seven five eight three three five two. Thank so, you. Yes. Also, you can call. I think it's the road department. Say when a deer or whatever sit on the road to have them removed. I think they can somebody from uh, waste management to come pick them up because, again, right here, with our traffic we have coming in between the buzzers being stirred up when somebody drives by and, yeah. and so forth. It's another, it's another one of the services the county can pay taxes. And that's and a hazard, too. Oh, it's a definite. So who wants to take on that, that task of... Uh, uh, putting together those emergency numbers so that we can get those uh, into our website. Does any, anyone want to? I don't think you know. Who will? I don't Y'all want to work together on it, maybe? Just give it. Yeah, I got a lot of the numbers. Here. I could just give them to Judy. Okay, and then we can get with you, Charlie, and find a, a way to get that set so that we can find a location for it. Okay. All right. Where were we? Got up on it. Okay. Uh, like I said, uh, that's a pretty good read there, that stuff, but you can also go online and get more information concerning fraudulent saying your dog is a service animal, and actually it isn't. 
Uh, there are some avenues that we can have. Same thing with the emotional support animal. Uh, we don't allow emotional support animals in there. Though. Okay, the others, uh, some, some of the same members from last year don't feel that the rules pertain to them or their guests. I'm already having issues. Dogs in the park, glass at in the park, trailers at midpoint at point park, boats mooring out here in Hoder Park, uh, and uh, and property gates being left open and prop and propped open. I have a talk with them, and they act like you know there's a big sign, both with trailers and both with glass. Those are two major things. They act like. You know, they can't read or something. I don't know. The, I don't know the story. It's going to have as much to do with the trespass, and that's what the legal group is working with the sheriff's office and the state. Okay. So we can get that determination. Once that's and determined, the, then, then the board can take action. And we're getting them on camera because I if, I know the group, the people, and they're, they're regular. Uh, they do the same thing over and over. And, and then, then, and then I'm then I'm the one that harassing them when I ask them to follow the rules. Just ask her, please but, not do that. But do you have uh, a diary of the date and their name and that they've done it? Because if they do it more than three times, maybe we should be, you know, penalizing. What them. I'd like to do is get get it established through law enforcement first. And yeah. It'd be better to have law enforcement handle that. Okay. We can actually do our warnings uh, as we communicate with law enforcement, then we can take action. People need to understand if they, you know, if somebody gets injured in the park and I and I've and I've documented that somebody's been drinking beer in there, I'm gonna bring that to the board. Well, uh, let me explain to you about that. Beer bottles and stuff. Yeah, that's that that is a job that the board has uh, agreed for the park ranger to do. So therefore, if you don't do that, mm -hmm. and something happens, then we're going to be liable. That's right. We're liable anyway, but if we don't do it, we're going to be more liable in the opinion of the law. So you're, you're, that's your job. And you know, any more, it's not much more than, hey, you know, would you mind taking that out of here? You know. Uh, another issue we're having is members at the boat ramp. I don't know as much on that side because they got more room, but. They're leaving the gate open long enough for three or four more boats to come in behind them that, that are there in their party. You know, I don't know how you want to handle it. Our park, our, that thing does not already hold our members. Now, if they're bringing guests over and parking their boat trailers in our, that thing's going to be full this year. I know it will this year. It's already. Well, what, what can potentially happen? You can only do the so much. Well, my thing so is. At the end of the day, uh, once uh, something is. Once we can get a determination of what it is, the members themselves will be the ones to complain the most, and we'll find a solution to it. So all I can, yeah, we're not going to put a, a hundred percent science on that bill. No, I know, but but we are going to work to to reduce it and restrict it the best we can. Well, the, but now, in, in the honesty, though, like I, I have a boat, my sons have boats, and we will all go down. So that can happen. Well, yeah, that does happen, but. At the end of the day, if you if it's people bringing and waiting for a lot of other folks to come, that's very nice and good, but that's not fair to the rest of the. My members. suggestion would be if, if it's only going to be on the weekends and holidays. My suggestion would be to have the gate reader check the key for each person, or ask if the, you know, something like that. Especially on holiday weekends. Especially on holiday weekends because it it fills up. You girls know that. Can't, mm -hmm. We can't even. Okay. Uh, my suggestion for camping park and all of the pavilions, people go onto the trepo.net calendar and reserve them. Every one of the pavilions. That way you know you're going to have them. It's filling up too. And it's filling up. I'm even saying now camping park, if they're going to camp the night out at camping park, that needs to be put in that calendar. Because I'll show up there at one or two in the morning, somebody will be out there and I'll have to wake them up and ask them if they're a member. Or if they have a key, you know, uh, even if to get to think most of the time they leave the gate open so they can get in and out. Right. And, uh, and that's happened quite a few times. And the thing is, we're uh, camping park. That's only one pavilion down there. Right. And, you know, it's not fair for 
groups that can't use it because the same group keeps using it all the time. Our same groups keep using it all the time. It needs to be going to calendar. And somebody can say, well, it's already been reserved for so and so. What's the, what's, what's, what do you think? Board members? Put that on the calendar to reserve for the summer? I thought it was. I thought we, they're supposed to, aren't they? If they can. He's talking about people going down there and spending a day and I'm, not reserve the day off. I'm talking about all the True, pavilions. You're right, you're right, you're right. People have been, um, so mainly, yeah, we have not had anybody really um, camping, but they have. I already Even, I, I know, but I'm just kind of, I know we've talked about I think he wants you to reiterate it. Clubhouse requires $100 five. Point Park Pavilion 1, Point Park Pavilion 2, Camping Park Camp Sun. That's what you got. Do you got midpoint in there? Uh, the midpoint. Midpoint. That's what he's talking about. Small person. Do you think he? I guess we could. Well, you know, it's, and it's not just camping or camp site. It's the pavilion. Yeah. Yeah. Are they all there? Well, we put numbers on them for a reason, right? Or you could put um, where's camping? You put campsite and. Pavilion, let's add to that line. Mm -hmm. Good. And I think you there's, that there's folks using it all. Oh, I do too. I so, think so. But it, so in fairness, if there's an opportunity for it to be shared, it should be scheduled. That's the reason why they're there to be Can used. Fix that. Sure. Board members, y'all, y'all good with it? Okay. So y'all gonna make it where all pavilions have to be reserved at other part? All the parts. And all the parts. Because yeah. what, what we have right now is you reserve the clubhouse, the large pavilion, the small pavilion, everything else is first come, first serve, is how it sits right now. No, first come, first the serve. thing is, uh, that's fine. You know, but if somebody uh, the had. The problem to... I see with that is a lot of people that reserve at Hoder Park mm -hmm. don't show up sometimes, then you're going to have three pavilions sitting down there, and nobody's at them. And well, then maybe we better. need, well, then maybe we need to. Find out what time they're going to be there. I mean, this is one more step of work, but to find out when they're wanting that pavilion, and if they're not there within a two-hour window, it's released. Well, this weekend was no well, people. What were, do y'all think? Twenty minutes. Twenty minutes. Two hours. Yeah, I wouldn't. An hour. Twenty minutes. Thirty minutes. minutes. I think you're not going to be there within. Half an you're hour. not going to be there within 20, thirty minutes. Well, this weekend so, we had issues with the pavilion. Nothing major. Because you, if you're making plans, you're making plans. Right. 30 minutes. Well, I don't see nothing wrong with what I've been doing. If the pavilions get overrun, then I just will reserve the one up off the hill for somebody. Yeah, so at least two fine. open at the bottom. Mm -hmm. well, you generally don't reserve a pavilion at a time frame anyways. You reserve uh, it the day. Day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But she's saying they never show. But if they don't show. And then we got pavilions and other people wanted them. And that's not fair for she's or it, and it's not. Have we, have we had a lot of complaints? Well, no. People coming after. Well, you, I, you're mm -hmm. saying they're just staying open. Yeah. Uh, but you'll but have two are, people that want a certain filling, day. Yeah, but are, if there's nobody there, are people filling in those anyway? I mean, I would if people left open there and you said it's reserved. No, because if I put a reserve sign out there, then nobody's going to mess with it. Yeah. We I'm got trying it. to curtail anybody getting upset and having. So like we were so busy this last weekend, I actually had to reserve the one off the hill. Now I can see you can reserve one off, but I think them two down there by the water should stay open. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. The only time that I could put a pavilion in there was a toter, and I gave from four to six. So, you know, it wasn't an all day thing. Well, I mean, I'm sure that some families need all day for their parties, but a lot of us just need a couple hours. Well, we had two families in one and the big one yeah, this weekend. Week, yeah. That worked out okay. Uh, so my, what are you recommending? Well, I'm recommending that, you know, if you, I'm trying to curtail any animosity and, and issues, you know, right. with people. Well, I, you know, you, your name wasn't on the calendar or your name isn't. You guys are here all the time, you know, and. I've had people complain about that, not being able to use certain pavilions because there's people in them all the time. Same groups. This is what I told that lady the other day. That's, with many members we got now, you can't wait till a day or two before you want to reserve the pavilion to call right. for. Yeah, you better get on there a couple months in advance now. It is because most of yeah. June's yeah. 
And it's, uh, to me, it's just kind of stopping the issue before it gets going. Well, I do like the idea that if someone does a show, yeah, that within about 30 minutes, that's reserved side of all. That is one thing we do. Um, I think that's, that's very fair. fair. But that's so, a lot of follow up. So who is going to? Like that well, on the weekend, she puts a reserve on it anyway. It's, anyway. Weekend. it's on the weekend generally. The only you know. time I make during the week is right. somebody reserves. And if they're running behind, they can call Terry. Well, I mean, it's not like we're. I mean, we're, we're going to make the effort to get the maximum times that we can. That's Absolutely. Not. So maybe going forward, you tell them when they reserve yeah. it. If you're not there in 30 minutes, it's going to be released. You better. You know, that, you I've got to be able to hang my hat on something too when people see me in the park and they say, it was supposed to be. We we're supposed to be on this. Okay, so um, well, you can look how do we? How do we? I can look on my phone. The, uh, when they when they reserve, it should just go out. No, I mean, how, we need to have it where they 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 see and read that. And then when they go when they reserve, an email gets sent to them, and that needs to be put in that email, right, Bonner? Mm, no. What? Don't they have to fill out a little? Yeah, you fill out the form. That's where you get the key number and the name. It's the last one second. Yeah, don't we have a set of rules? There you want to reserve. Yeah. There you have a set of rules. Yeah. So yeah. 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 That's what yeah. right. I agree to be responsible for my guys. Any message you want to send for that? Yeah. 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 I just, you know, I just want to make it cognizant of everybody that the, 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 the purveyor might be available if you want to use one. Okay. Yeah. So, Bill, you about finished with your report? You have a couple more items on there? Yeah, you know. Let's, let's totally work on that for a second. We'll come back to you, okay? Uh, I got a phone call about that, too. Yeah, I had a member ask me about what do you think the people could do something about possibly investing in or having somebody run a water truck around here on a busy weekend days? You can talk about that. Yeah. I just like, I like the rain. That's the way on the rain. Okay. Because it's so smoky, it gets almost like. We've got a lot of people that are doing that, though, and I think that's kind of kind of neat that they are. Yeah. Oh, a beer truck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was the one that brought that up. The oh. beer truck? <laughs> <laughs> water, water truck. Yeah, yeah I didn't see that. This is a county maintained road that the county come by during the summer times because every house around here and everybody on golf cars is getting nailed. We know. Uh, yeah. We absolutely know I'm what you mean. I don't know you somebody. They dust me by. Uh, I might actually. And I saw them dusters on the weekend. Yeah. I would, I'm just going to kind of. I wouldn't send anybody to go to the county and ask them to do that. No, they're just not going to do it. There's no way they're going to show because they have okay. they've got thousands of miles of dirt roads in the county. Yeah, you know, it's the same complaint. That's what you will hear. It does something need to be done? It'd be nice if it could be if, if the speed limits were were maintained and people would slow down. I mean, especially folks are walking on the road and sometimes folks go by them 50 miles an hour. I mean, literally just blank them out on those It's is horrible, but I don't know what's just there. We talked about that solution years ago. I don't know what the answer is. I, I don't think we can uh, afford to buy a bank for a you know, but it's not to run it, but I'm just saying. A lot of folks that just put sprinklers on that we, we discussed that with the county and that's, that's a no. Okay. So, anyway, all right. So that's the gentleman that brought it up. Okay. <laughs> What's your name? Shane. Yeah. Shane. Shane. Thank you, Shane. Well, just keep thinking. Maybe something good will happen in that way. I don't know. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah. I. Bigger uh, with a water tank on the back. Little square. Around with you need a billionaire to move in the neighborhood. Uh, I know, guys. I'm the asshole. Uh, there you go. We have a petition right. yeah. to pay. Yeah. We've requested pay funds. So. Good luck. Good luck. Unless any of the board members have any questions, I think I'm, I've okay. wasted a lot of your time. So. Good, good job, um, Bill. Thanks. Do we have a solution? Um, um, we're done. Actually, implementing on the website right now. Okay. And that would be the the provision of um, 
30 minutes. We well, will. I'm adding a date time. Okay. Um, so. um, to from Charlie, can you add it to the rules that we have for the, uh, for the, uh, for the uh, we have a set of rules for them. We can add that to the rules and then we're going to act. We're, we're going to be reworking the rules to bring it back to the board to approve all the rules. But we can actually work on that. We can utilize that as our rules, but we'll do an official uh, action on that. You know, last year we, we put numbers on for that. We, we had talked right. about this before. Okay. Uh, We'll move on then. Thanks. We'll move on to uh, maintenance committee. Tommy uh, is out, of course, with his wife. Uh, Bill, we've had a few maintenance uh, issues. I think you've taken care of most of those. Right. Uh, most of them have, have to do with just uh, lock issues. And uh, over at uh, Brennan, I mean, uh, Boat Ramp Park over on the 20 side, I went over and two of the pavilion seats were wobbly and they were. And when they were first put in, they were put in with nails. I ran two lags on each side into the posts, uh -huh. about this long, about half inch. And I think those were tightened them. They tightened them right up, so, so those aren't wobbly no more. Um, let's see. I think that's about it. I just wanted to mention, too, the, the, the portal that should move those out because of the blood. I guess you. you we're gonna have to leave them out. We just Sounds like it. That's what we were coming back up to eighteen, and I wouldn't be surprised if that's numbers. That's higher. A low number. Yeah. Uh, to be honest with we'll you, we'll be in hurricane season soon, so yeah. keep your fingers crossed. Well, my number was around twenty. It was around what twenty two six or something like that. Uh, I think it was twenty two, wasn't it? Yeah. It was twenty two six. Yeah. So that old mark was the old twenty four foot mark before they changed the eighty eight. Uh, I don't know if it'd be. Or whatever they call it, ADB or whatever. I don't know if it'd be worth it to have them pick their portal that's up and save us a month they rent. Don't, they don't. I don't think that they. They'll do it, but what they'll tell you is that when you need them, they may not have them to bring out. That's right. Yeah. So they would rather you keep them, of course. Right. And it's our time and end time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we've got we've got that added to the uh, to the uh, website. Okay. All right. So we'll Thank move you, on Charlie. then uh, to uh, communications. Uh, I mean, uh, Bond. Bond. <laughs> I, you took Okay. Okay. We'll um, start with the membership. So for May, we're at Columbia County side is at 654 members. Swanee County is 240 members. So we're at 894. Total. Really nothing else. Anything going on? Not really. Nothing going on. Okay. Uh, I did see an email. I, I had I had time to bring across it today from um, DJ Ice Cream Chris. I haven't read it, but that's part. If we can find a spot um, for June, we might do a quick some kind of a yeah, summer event. Yeah. yeah, summer. Bash. We'll put that out if we can get that together. In June. Mm -hmm. Okay. That you probably would need to do all y'all need to just reserve for the day. I'm trying. Yeah. <laughs> you better reserve it. You're busy. You need to plan ahead. So we'll move on then. Your, your pitch, Mr. Communication. Yeah. We'll move on then to uh, new business. And you see, uh, uh, we did discuss the uh, gate greeters, the president, but we'll also talk about the 2024 election review paperwork. So, Vonda, you've got something together for that. What I did is I went back from last year. Um, I gave each of you, it has a paper clip on holding the two pieces together. It's the um, election voting procedure. And all I did is went in and changed the dates. Um, generally, they're the same, of course. I think this year's the 12th is our members meeting. Last year that we stopped receiving the absentee ballots and the proxies that Monday. So I changed it to whatever that, I think it's the 7th. 
So I did it on the set that lay out the same way. So it's on the 12th. We stopped taking them that Monday, just like last year. The only thing that I, I, other than changing the actual dates from 22 to 24 um, or 25, whatever it was, is there was a place where I remember Skip sat down here for two different weekends with the ballot box so people could turn them in. And out of two weekends, we had two people. So I just took that part out because it's just as easy to take it to the post office, put it in your mailbox. If you can't come to vote, you can get it in. Okay. Um, so all of so just in this election coming up, I know there's there's two sides. There's a a five side and a six side. Right. Right. So B B is a which is five. Uh, so um, so there'll be five five spots um, for board members. There will be the. Um, the four officers, because those are only a two years, and then four alternates. Okay, do you know which board members are up? I do. Go ahead. It would be Glenn Hunter, Tom Trammell, Sammy Keene, Mike Davis, and the empty seat was written. So those okay. are the five. five. Okay. Um, so just different things on here. Um, if, we you probably... could, if you could highlight. Um... What's going the, on? The actual dates of on the candidate guidelines and stuff. I will, but I think we might could even put this, um, maybe put this on so people can. Well, I, I'll take I'll get some copy of it. Sure. Um, but just roughly, let me give you a rundown just to give you the highlight dates. Um, so it's going to be on October 12th is our members meeting. Um, it tells that this, the, um, you can vote if you're in good standing. It's five board members serving a four year term from January 1 of 25 until December 31st of 2028. Four alternates, two year term from January 1 of 25 to December 31st of 26. Also be electing the corporate officers, the president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer who also serve two terms from January 1 of 25 until December 31st of 26. Two year, term. two year terms. Um, then the next one is um, on or around June 15th, the application um, for candidates um, will be, um, we'll put it on both Facebook, we'll put it, um, we'll put the actual form um, under documents um, on our website. So everyone will have access. So um, for anyone that's interested, it'll be on or around June 15th. Yeah, that's on a Saturday. Yeah, so it could be a day before, it could be after. We'll put the, the word out. All applications must be received no later than August 1st of 2024. Um, and it goes over like the in-person guidelines that um, the election will be held October 12th between 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. Uh, the member uh, member voting in person may pick up their ballot the morning of the election. Um, they need a photo ID and their member number. Um, each member will place their own completed ballot in a locked ballot box. Voting will end at 1 p.m. And then it'll be turned over to the counting committee, which I guess we'll use the same, um, the same people we use from um, Columbia County with their. Yeah, who, who, who got, who got you Carol, just, Carol, 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 okay, Carol. Because we try to stay away so that no one here has really anything. It's from the Board of oh, Elections. So those are actual employees. Yeah, of the, the county. Election. And I think we paid them like, like $100, $100 each okay. to do that. But it took all of us away from that. So no one. Um, then it goes into, um, so we probably need to get Carol to contact them also. Goes into the absent uh, absentee ballot guidelines. Um, it says while while not a, an election requirement, absentee ballots will be available for the 2024 election. If a member wishes to vote but can't be in attendance on October 12th of 2024, the member must request an absentee ballot no later than September 1st by phone or by email. Um, and but those are both here. And then a ballot will be mailed to the address on file for the membership. Um, and it just goes into Tom how to send it in, how where to address it. Um, absentee ballots must be received no later than October 3rd. And that is that Monday before uh, the members meeting. The locked ballot box will only be open on the day of election by the counting committee. 
Um, at conclusion of the election, the county committee will tally all votes. The results will be delivered to the election committee and immediately posted on TREPA website, but usually they're pretty quick when we announce it um, that day. Um, under no circumstance will anyone be allowed to cast another person's ballot. Um, also, there's proxy guidelines um, on here just saying that just like with the absentee ballot, they can request a proxy form if they cannot attend and it has to be um, requested from the person um, that's going to be using it uh, no later than September 1st. It also has our phone number and email. The proxy must be filled out and returned no later than October 7th, which is that Monday before the members meeting. Um, nobody can be collecting proxies from everybody. Yeah, you, no one, no one is to turn in, just hand in anything, proxies, absentee ballots. They need to be coming through the mail. If they can't they either need to come vote or put them in the mail. This, that, well, this is why I'm bringing this to the yeah. board because what happened last year, Terry would collect the mail. She would bring it to Hilda. They both would do a count on how many came in and they would both sign it so that they knew how many were in that box. Nothing could be slid in or um, so it worked last year. Um, I felt it, you know, went, went very fair. There was the count was perfect. There was nothing extra added to the box. Box wasn't open until those other people was put in their hands. But that's why do y'all have any other suggestions or how on top of what we did last election? There was a lot of confusion last year, I think, with people wanting to bring in last minute proxies. Yeah, and the right. deadline had already passed, so there was some upset people, but they had passed the deadline. But this is why I want to go ahead and get this right. out now right. so that people can see okay, it so and we, read it. We're gonna, you know, I guess we we should post it here. You gotta put it on the website. Yeah. Okay. Be on the website, and I yeah. yeah. So that that'll be posted in around the middle of June. The actual um, application will be on there. Um, also, the other thing I gave you is pretty much what I went over: is the instructions for absentee ballots and proxy forms. It's the single sheet, and it pretty much has that same information on it of the same dates and when it's to be um, received. So nothing's different there. But each member must fill out their own ballot. Um, and same thing with a proxy. You know, people don't need to go around collecting proxies. If someone cannot be here and truly wants to vote, then I feel that they need to, well, they to can't do, that. Go around do that. Correct. Hmm? They can't go around. No, correct. They did last year or the, at the last meeting, but we wouldn't even have an election then. But I told at that time, I told Vonda. That's the same thing as harvesting ballots. They don't like somebody to harvest ballots, so why should we allow somebody to harvest proxies? Is right. didn't someone show up at your house with a, a folder full of them wanting to turn them in? But, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But we had already put a date of or the time, I think, okay. of noon that day. So, so we'll we'll actually, make sure that confusion's right. not out there this year, then. Okay. All right. So, um, one thing I would like to do on top of this is maybe to. Uh, Probably need to do it a month ahead. Once we know who our people running are, maybe a month before this members meeting, um, we could do a thing out here and let, allow them to speak so people see them and know who they are. We haven't done that in the past, but I think it wouldn't be a bad idea. Meet and greet. Let's we got a lot of new people in the neighborhood. We've done that last year. So before last year, mm -hmm. I come out. But just so, a quick, uh, just a quick, so people can see because you don't, I, you know, if you and if you don't live here. You, you're just going by what somebody says about someone or but it, you know, if you can. So what would be something that would be convenient for everybody to, you know, people pretty precious of their Saturdays, yeah. times and whatever. So how do you, how do you do that? I don't know. Maybe you I'm, can't do, maybe you can't do a meet and greet. You can do a video. Uh, you know, I'm, hi, I'm. We could. <laughs> I sit there and take a video of each person. And, I'll be honest with you, okay. it was me just for the convenience of, of folks. We ought to try to find just do it around a board meeting. That would be that would be fine too. But I'm, I'm serious. We should try to find a way to do it around a board meeting and uh, get that information out there that the candidates would be here to speak and even they would answer questions. Let's like start at 530. Sure. <laughs> just depending on how many we have, we can get an idea of that and we can tie that together with it. 
board meeting in that but one. It could, yeah, it could go with the, you'll have to shorten your part, part uh, thing, but we can do it right after, right, right after get everything okay. done and then let everyone sure. speak. Well, since you're screaming, could we uh, basically be secure here? Right yep. yeah. That's what we we're saying at the end of it. Yeah. We'll just add that in. That gives everybody an opportunity. Okay. Why don't we do that? Okay. Any questions on the uh, uh, election uh, and voting procedure? Uh, so what I do is we did have a change from this. So what I'd like to do is just make get an official motion to approve this uh, with that change on that particular Saturday. Motion to approve with the change for that particular Saturday. That's the only change we had, is that correct? Yeah, I just, yeah, the only thing I actually took out was the fact that, yeah, they sat here for two Saturdays and we took that out. Everything else is just the actual date, the year. The new date. The okay. new date. So we have a motion to approve with the changes. Uh, we have a second. Second by Mr. Trammell. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. All right. We have any old business to discuss? Just build. Okay. Then, uh, pardon me. They just build. Uh, <laughs> he said he's well, old. I'm, I'm old. Okay. All right. We'll move on You'll to the property somewhere. owners. Uh, we have anyone in the audience that would like to address the board? If you do, please state your name and address. My name is Clay Castles. I live at 165 Southwest Boston Terrace. Um, you know, preserving these pavilions, if we reserve two of them and put more picnic tables, people want picnic tables and a fire pit. That's all they want. So if we put picnic tables and a few more fire pits around, people might use them. You mean like grills? Yes. And Clay, where, do you, where do you think in, uh, in the scheme of things with all the parts? Where, do you, where are you thinking primarily? You put them anywhere. No, I'm just asking, uh, you, you actually must have a, a vision or a... Well, camping park, put a few more down there, and need more campsites. If we open up a little bit more area, just go down there or have lawn people clear it out. Mm -hmm. Put picnic tables, like a campsite. Put a fit uh, uh, a yeah. grill there, and it's camping. Okay. And... We'll, we'll take that into consideration. What do we have? Yes. Six park uh, camping sites now? Six or five? Not even five. It's according to how wet it is. You know, you got to go by that. Probably about two or three is the maximum I'd say to camp in there. Two or three. Yeah, you can see more people going down to camp. Yeah, but you only got one. You want to cut down Santa Fe or Santa Fe. Yeah, it's going to be a little more. You have to cut back some more to that underbrush. But you have to budget in. Right. No, so we'll actually, just put a big table and that's camp. Like, we don't have the budget. And that'll designate sites. Won't have people everywhere. That's going to have to go next year. There's no money in the budget. The biggest campsite have that reserve site. But we'll put picnic tables in the pit. They do a grill. So people can use for free. Yeah. We'll take a look yeah, at the budget. See yeah. what we. It would help out if we had more picnic tables. Anyone else? Just the board. I, yeah. I've already been told that. Uh, yeah. Like a shirt. Uh, <laughs> um, just, I want to reiterate about what Bill was saying about the members and the people in the park. It's not like you're just sitting like, like I can't have a guest. It's kind of how it's kind of a rule. Like, can well, I have well, guests here that go down there by themselves? Twelve people. And I'm not with. Then, when they leave the gate open, I don't want them to like you. To because um, they're guests of mine, but yeah, you don't know that they're and they're not members. But they need me. But I understand the problem of having people come in over here. So I want my yeah. guests to in and yeah. out. Let me let me explain what 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 that situation is. Okay. Is that when people leave the gate open for any exterior extended period of time, anyone else can walk in and come in. Right. That's the real problem. And see, from a liability standpoint, if we're going to have locking gates, it's for the members. Uh, we we. What started all of this was the universities and the towns around the overflow from the uh, big park. Yeah. All trying to figure out how they can get in here. We basically got overrun. So okay. the folks that had really no business in here 
And so we were having to deal with that. They don't know our rules. They do what they want to. Sure. So at the end of the day, it's really for our members of uh, these parks are and their guests, their right. family and guests. So uh, we encourage you to bring your family and guests, but we have a responsibility to the gate. And so that's what the, the big concern is. And we have a lot of folks who say a lot of times the gate will be propped up, and it, it does uh, upset a lot of us when we see a water cooler or something holding the gate open. However, quite often, I've gone up and seen that happen, and a person really is just unloading their truck and right. saying, I don't want to have to, I said, you got you. because it's hard to get a no, come come back through that yeah. gate. But we said, we got, we got it, we understand. So, um, but that's that's the reason for that. It's not, we just don't want to leave it open for an extended period of time. Okay, it was just in the wording yeah. of how, and I understand, because I ask people too, you don't look familiar to me, I know, I ask people if you have a key. You know, as well. Right, right. But, but you know, we've we got a lot of uh, children and grandchildren that are coming in and utilizing these parks. We only want the people that live back to people that live in Free River are good people. So the thing is, we want to make sure that they, they, it's their park and they're utilizing it, right. not folks from the outside. We don't know we don't know who all these people from the outside are. We've had some issues in the past with groups uh, that just happened to. Wing by, and they've all been drinking and having a big time. And they, yeah, so well, that, that and they have nothing to do with us, and that's our job to keep them out. Yeah, all of that. Yeah, right. right. The other thing too is in the rules. Uh, you got you bring twelve guests, and the other thing is you're supposed to be with your guests. You can't just send them down. Uh, people do it all the time. Well. Do I check keys? No, nobody else told me the keys and you touch them. We're working on that. We're working on what you said. And it's all for safety for for the kids that come down here. You know what I mean? You know, it's such a great thing. I understand the way it's worded and how it's kind of because, you know, there's some times that I guess they want to go out and go down, or there's there's times that they want to do things where I'm tired or we're building or something of that sort. So they go come by themselves. And so I just don't want them to be. And they give them a key. Yeah, and I give them a key. And, uh, I don't want really to come back to me going, hey, this guy showed up and telling me to talk. Well, what we do, uh, uh, the, the ones, the gate greeters. Yeah, of course, I'll talk to you about Yeah, well, the gate greeters, yeah, as long as everything is up front and communicated with the gate greeters, we'll actually look at that number. And they and they may question, well, we don't recognize you. Uh, so, and because a lot of times keys are lost, are folks give keys to other people to just come in and use. But at the end of the day, well, who, who are you? Who are you with and, and why or whatever? We will, when I say why, we'll question. And it's only to protect our members. Right. It's the only reason that we're doing this. Otherwise, we just leave it open. We wouldn't worry about it, but our parts would be overrun. We didn't. So, all right, we'll move on. I as a member, too, that I, I should sell up the area as well. If that was the case, we would have no problem down here. Yeah. That was the case. Yeah. Well, I'm here now. <laughs> okay, do we have anybody else who want to speak to the board? Yes, ma'am. Um, hi, I'm Tim from Joe, and I'm Shane's better hat. Samantha. Samantha, okay. Um, Terry, I, we're saying about volunteer. Do we volunteer or how's that working? Do you to volunteer? So, from home, so. so we're asking for volunteers to work the gate at Hoder Park. You know, I have to sign up from 9 to 6 on Saturday or 10 to 5 on Sunday. Yeah, and then we will have a class before gate greet that you'll have to take so you'll know the rules, what you can do, what you can't do. Okay, is it all the same? So it just will, you just got other documents? On, yeah. yeah, it's, it's, it's oh. a post, it's on Facebook, it's on the group page, it's on announcements, okay. it's plastered it everywhere. All right, well, I can find it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, do we have anyone else who want to speak to the board? Okay, not hearing that, uh, I call for a motion to adjourn. Motion and second. All right, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. The next meeting is Tuesday the 11th.